All right, sorry for the delay. Wow, that's loud. Kevin Mitnick has been part of the 2600 community for many years, and um, his story resulted in a documentary that Emmanuel put together and put a lot of work into called Freedom Downtime. Um, if you haven't seen that, I highly suggest you pick it up. I don't know if it's for sale out there, but uh, if not, it should be. But uh, let's get straight away to Kevin Mitnick. How's every well? Yeah, hello. How's everybody doing? Yeah. All right. Well, hello. Test this. Okay, perfect. I could walk around now. It's great to be back. I'm sorry. I was supposed to speak here two years ago, but I was in Bogota, Colombia. And either from the food or the water, I ended up getting really sick. Ended up in the hospital in Colombia. They couldn't figure out what virus I had or what I ate that put me in there for about eight days. But I remember I'm sitting there in the hospital. Of all, all of a sudden, like three days later, the phone rings. I pick it up. I figure it's my family, right? It's some guy from CNN. He goes, Kevin, what's going on? And how, first of all, how did you know I was in the hospital? B, how did you get my number? And he says, oh, no, no, we found out you're in the hospital. We want to know what's going on. So I just told him I'm sick. I have a flu. But then he started getting into more interesting questions. He goes, so why exactly are you in Bogota, Colombia? <laughs> I told him I couldn't tell him. But, um, yeah, so I'm sorry I didn't get to make it last, uh, last hope, but I'm here today, and I'm just going to go through uh, some stories that you might find entertaining. I'm going to show you guys how you could easily unmask caller ID. So when anybody calls you, like on your cell phone, there's a real quick and easy way you could do it. So basically, there's, you don't have privacy. You know, get over it. Right? Have any of you already do that? Do you already unmask your caller ID when people call you? Because the old way of doing that is you forward the incoming call to an 800 number and then forward it you know, through one of these services back. But there's a much easier way. And last week, I'm proud to announce I got to sign my uh, uh, book deal with Little Brown. It's a publisher in New York, and I'm going to be able to write my life story. I had to wait a long time. <laughs> Finally, I get to tell my side. I had to wait seven years because part of my plea agreement with the federal government was that I couldn't profit off my story for seven years, and that expired in 2007. And then it took a while for my co-author and I to write up a proposal, then it went around to these publishing houses and I finally got the deal. So I hope, maybe in the next conference, I hope this is not really the last hope, but if it is, but the next HackerCon, I'll be able to present that book all to you. So, some stories. Um, I don't know, how many of you were here when I spoke four years ago? Okay, wow, okay, about 30% to 50%. So I might go over some of the same stories, just sit back and relax, and hopefully the people that weren't here will be uh, entertained. When I first got into uh, computers, it really started when I was a young kid, when I was 11 years old, I was fascinated with magic. And I used to hang out at the magic store on the weekends to learn, you know, my, my mom used to go to work and I had to go to school. Then on the weekends, I'd go to the magic store and kind of sit there and try to watch the salespeople perform illusions, and then I, I tried to learn the secrets. And then from magic, I fell into this hobby called amateur radio. And I think you just heard that they're offering amateur radio tests. And when I started in amateur radio, this is where I got very interested in telephony, because ham radio, they, allowed, they had things called auto patch back in the days, where you can make phone calls, but you can do it for personal, uh, personal use. So once I got into amateur radio, I met another student in high school in Los Angeles, California, and this kid was into phone freaking. And he wanted to borrow one of my ham radios, and in exchange, he said he will teach me a little bit about this unknown world of me of telephones. And this kid could do amazing things at the time that I thought was amazing. He can call a telephone number, a local number, put in a five-digit code, and call anywhere in the world. Little did I know, he was using Sprint and MCI at the time. If he had somebody's uh, telephone number, he can call a secret number at the phone company called the CNA Bureau, and he can get the name and telephone number. If he just had my 
parents' names, he was able to get my non, their non-